It's a happy little vine right here. How about another happy little vine? The word cosplay is a Japanese word, and it's playing in costume, really. You just live out that character. I didn't know what cosplay was, honestly, until Comic-Con, sorry, Fanex for Salt Lake came to town, and all these people just started coming out of the woodwork and be like, hey, this is what as we all do. We all do this costume and stuff. The difference between a costume and the cosplay, I think, is sort of taking on the persona. I know that when I'm sitting and, you know, I cosplay as Kylo Ren, and when I finally do wear the costume, I can kind of bring bring elements to the of the performance to the costume. It's not just a photograph. I'm walking through, and how does he walk? How does he look at people? Do people get out of my way because they're afraid of the presence? And it's like, Things like that are what make it the cosplay, not just a costume. That's that's how it kind of got born, was a bunch of fans sitting around going, why can't we do this? I go because I like seeing the people react to these characters. Because it's just smiles for me behind the mask or whatever the case is. And it's just, I'm just smiling because these people are loving it. The, the hardest thing is doing it. The hardest thing is taking that first step into the convention in this new cosplay. Um, and once you do it, you're fine. Like you, you, it's one of those things where you think it's gonna be this big, terrible thing and you, you, your feet hit the ground and people are excited to see you and it's better. For me, one of the biggest hurdles is uh, time management. <laughs> uh, it's kind of one of those things where if you let it get away from you, suddenly it's 4 a.m. and the con is now and you're in the hotel room sewing and sobbing. Um, when it comes to a, a, a group like this, and they have a costume regulation list, and it has to basically um, meet a certain standard of, of quality, um, then it becomes a little bit more difficult because you have to make sure everything's properly proportioned properly. Uh, you know, the ratio for each different plate is okay. And I always like to tell people, realize that the last 10% of your build is going to be the most frustrating of everything. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not easy. It's a labor of love. <laughs> Being a cosplayer, being a costumer, definitely gives you a feeling of empowerment. And again, especially when it's well received, that empowerment of, I'm good at this, and I can continue being good at this, and I will always do this. We are all very giving people, and we want to do more for the community. They want to do something. And you know, raising money for charity was the easiest thing we could come up with, where it has an impact. They can put their all into it, and not have to worry if they're adequate or not. One of my favorite things that has come from the cosplay community is um, <laughs> cosplayers would love any excuse to gather. Um, and so a lot of times there will be like donation drives, like a themed party. Like a friend of ours actually has a, an organization called Cosplay for a Cause and she'll like organize like seasonal parties. Trooping is, you know, our our, uh, our terminology for going out and actually doing the charity events. Um, so, you know, we call it a troop, we go out. There's all kinds of different things we'd be doing from a Star Wars premiere to Children's Hospital uh, to manning a booth at a convention where we're raising money for like Make-A-Wish Foundation, that kind of stuff. We're affiliated with Make-A-Wish here in Utah. Um, so all of our groups in the past few years have sort of unified and made one sort of Star Wars Central. We have a new uh, local motto, I guess, called One Galaxy, One Goal. We're all there to make the same goal, to, to do charity work, to, to provide for the kids. And we started to think, you know, with Star Wars, they've got this charity group. We should do the same thing for superheroes. We've been able to grow and expand. Uh, we kind of started off doing Toys for Tots. And through some of those contacts, we made also with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and we will go and grant rip wishes. To show up and put on a costume and make somebody smile is one gesture, but to be able to foot the bill for their wish is a completely different level of humbling contribution to be part of. And so um, that's been something that has been kind of awakening to see that you can make a real tangible financial impact with this to help people aside from just you know, a good feeling in a passing moment. And... It's great to have an excuse to come together and do something really good for people. Like, makes you feel 
not just like you are having fun, but like you're doing, you feel good, so you do good. There are other events that are joyful, but tinged with sadness as well. Early, I think it was January 1st, January 2nd, earlier this year, um, we got contacted for an emergency troop. Um, most of the time, they, we try to get as much time as possible so we can get more people there. And this one came in and said, hey guys, this is something that's, it, it's gotta happen on this day and um, anybody that can make it from any of the clubs, we would be overjoyed. Um, and it was a kid who had leukemia, I believe. Um, and he had been in the hospital and wanted to see Star Wars before he passed. We all jumped in and I luckily had the day off. And I'm like, you know what, it's close enough, I'm gonna go. And I jumped in my kit and drove down. We went into the movie theater. Um, we were, you know, basically we had no idea what was going on. We went in and surprised him and his family, who were the only people in the audience. And just the look on his face was amazing. And he was crying tears of joy. And I'm glad that was one day that I kept my helmet on because I was crying like you wouldn't believe. Um, just to see how hard the disease had hit him and how withered and whatnot he was. Um, we were invited to, to stick around and watch the movie if we wanted to, and we all sat, you know, multiple seats above him. The next morning we found out that he passed away that night. And that's something that's always hit me because we were be able to be there on his very last day on earth with his family, seeing the one thing that he wanted to see. And his mom sent us out a big thank you, um, saying that he just wouldn't stop talking about all the costumes um, everybody that had been there and you know it's something that's that's why we do what we do you know it's it's not about you know being cool or anything I mean we're all total geeks we get to you know we make cool armor and go do charity work and that's all what we do it's great for me because making the armor is something that I love to do but I love to do the, the charity work equally as much because those times make it It gives us a reason for doing what we do. Um, it legitimizes us to our friends, our family, our spouses. It's, it's making a difference to those little kids.